What's up guys and welcome back to another epic unboxing. Today we're going a little old school, a little, little kind of old school. It's still technically a reprint nonetheless, but it is old school in the sense that it is Metal Raiders. Yes, the 20th anniversary Metal Raiders. Never got a chance to actually open the rest of these things because I, I still have Spell Rulers. I still got Feral Serpents. I still got the Invasion of Chaos and um, definitely want to open up some, some more of those. I would try to complete the rest of the 20th anniversary this year, but of course with packs coming out, it just depends what's coming down in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, Metal Raiders. Let's talk a little about this. Obviously, this pack came out a very long time ago. Originally, of course, back in 2002 in North America. And obviously, this set is super nostalgic for me because um, obviously, the Legend of Blue Eyes, Metal Raiders, like once, once you got into it, you got into it. And of course, Metal Raiders was that second pack to come out. And uh, some of the high value pulls was, of course, that Summon Skull. You gotta have the Summon Skull. We also got the Magic Jammer. Of course, the big one, Mirror Force. Everybody wanted Mirror Force back in the day. If you guys recall, I had the Harpy's Lady Sister, which I think I graded. That was also in my collection back in the day. Of course, the Time Wizard. And another card, of course, that I got first edition of is, of course, that Thousand Dragon. Um, that Secret Rare. I never got graded though, so maybe I'll grade that one day. Of course, you want the first editions of these, but we're going with the 20th anniversary and some of the prices are not going to be super, super fantastic, but pulling it nonetheless will definitely get me excited. But decent amount of pulls to get. Obviously, you want ultra rares or secret rares. Some supers as well, maybe. There's a lot of cards I did not pull from this, so without further ado, let's get into it. Obviously, we did pull some. If you haven't already watched the I guess technically the first part, let me check that out right over here. That's when we, I pulled it when it first originally came out last year. But it's essentially almost a year later, almost a year later, depending on like when I actually release this video. Because I like to record a lot of videos ahead of schedule, just in case I'm in the road or traveling and I have like, you know, things that I want to protect. So I mean, how many, how many packs do we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five, 18 packs. 18 times the details. Now, speaking of protecting your cases and stuff like that, let's say you want to protect this pack right here. Here is a way you can protect it with today's sponsor, Gen Loader. Bop, bop, bop. Ooh. It is, of course, the protector of those cases or those booster boxes. Nice and shiny there. Obviously, you'll slip in what you're trying to protect right inside here. Add in the magnetic bottom there, or in this case, it's probably better to put it in the top, I would imagine. So that way it doesn't accidentally slip out, but you get the drift, you get the drift, and then boom, looks just like new. Now, the, the one case I did want to protect is actually this one right here. Yeah, this one is still sealed up, as you can see. I don't plan to ever open up this, but if you guys want to see a version of this, let me know in the comments down below. This is of course, a very expensive booster box. And I've, I've got to protect it at all costs, at all costs, especially as a collector. And as you can see, there you go. Now you can display it and know that it's protected. So yeah, if you check out the link down below, to support the show, did a little small little kickback for us. And any support, of course, will go back into the channel, provide you guys with the best content that I can possibly provide with my limited budget. But anyway, love you guys. Check out the sponsor. We'll talk about it. And we'll move on to, of course, Metal Raiders. All right, let's do this thing. Metal Raiders. Now, I don't think we pulled a Summon Skull yet. I don't believe we pulled the, the Thousand Dragon. We might have, we might have. The 20th anniversary version, we might have. So we'll see what we can get here in this opening. And I love opening these nostalgic cards. Now keep in mind, they, they've reprinted it. So this, this is like almost like a modern take on the design. Because if you guys know the, the previous look of the card is definitely different. I'll probably flash a picture of that original design because they kind of modernize the actual layout of it. But yeah, the first card, as you saw, was the Crawling Dragon. The Ryukushin uh, uh, Powder? <laughs> no, po Powered, <laughs> not Powdered. The seven colored fish, definitely one of the must haves in a beat down deck back in the day. A gazelle, the king of the mystical beasts. The cheerful coffin. The musician king. 
Um, I remember him from the anime. Obviously, this one is a weird card because it requires two female characters or two female presumed characters to turn into a quote-unquote male character? I guess they were being uh, very forward back in the day as well. The, uh, the can uh, Cancun. <laughs> Cocoon of Evolution. I don't know why I'm thinking Cancun for some reason. Got vacation on my mind, apparently. The Labyrinth Tank. And of course, the card that must be needed for the the Harpy Lady Sisters is the Elegant Egotist. Actually, a pretty useful card back in the day as well. I think it's one of the, like the, one of the very first cards that, that I remember being a special summon card you can use. Probably not a, a big price, but we'll, we'll check it out. We'll check it out. This one is uh, twenty four cents. Twenty four cents. It's very elegant. All right, next pack. One, two, three, and four. Right, we have the Rabbit Horseman. We got Trent. Trent Knight. If you guys have been watching my uh, my Pokemon series on my other channel. We have the Cyber Source. Another seven colored fish. You probably want at least three of those in your deck back in the day. The Rock Org Gretel number one. The Hayu Shubi? Shube? Very ugly card. Koji Koshi. We pulled a. Ooh, uh, we might we might have potential here. So our first card here is the Great Moth. Rare only. And the card. Ooh. It's a super rare only though. Tribute to the Doom. But at least it'll be new to my collection. Not too shabby, $1.40, so definitely decent, especially for a reprint. Now, as I mentioned before in, uh, in the intro, I do have a lot of these uh, that I still haven't pulled yet from the original, uh, I guess, because I bought a bunch of boxes of these uh, last year when it first came because of the nostalgia of it all. Because I, I was thinking to myself, oh man, it might, it might be like gone, you know, like it might be hard to get these first edition was everyone was you know everyone was nostalgic and they want to buy this and i was thinking to myself i had to buy a, a bunch just just in case that i want to have videos planned out for these older sets that i love we have the dream clown but of course i went to you know i go to the store every every so often for my games gamestop gamestop not not gamestop but my the the, the, the shop that i stop at um that that has these uh, these cards we play games and um, they still have a bunch of these still left over. So obviously uh, that's good to know. That's good to know. So I could still technically buy some of these cards because um, like I want to complete the collection. Even though it's 20th anniversary, it might not be worth much, you know, right now because they're technically not first editions. But the fact that I have the ability to buy these booster boxes kind of gives me the, uh, the joy of, you know, collecting the back in the day as, when I was a kid. Because as a kid, I, I can only buy like five packs, maybe. If that, maybe two packs. But the fact that I, I can like buy a booster box now, whew, it's a game changer for me as an adult. All right, we have a rare card here only. Ken Soldier. Very nostalgic card. From Keith, Ben and Keith. This one is a 47 cents. 47 cents. Now, the one thing I do want to do eventually, like... like it might be it might not be a traditional versus, but I do have an idea of how I could potentially potentially get um, like the first editions Legend of Blue Eyes, first edition No Raiders. It's gonna be a very very expensive multi year project, but it's something that I, I'm very passionate about to do is completing my first edition collection because I technically have a first edition Blue Eyes and like like um, it might not be the greatest like rating. It was only like a PSA 5, if you guys recall. But uh, I'd like to go back and like maybe complete that collection um, and have a, a binder just of my first editions of the original, at least the first three sets, like the uh, Legend of Blue Eyes, Metal Raiders, and Spell Rulers, maybe a Magician's Force, and Pharaoh Serpents. Okay, those those four, if I did my math right. But yeah, those are, those are the ones that are like nostalgic for me. Evasion of Chaos, I don't know, like, uh, I guess I wasn't that, um, I, that came in a t later round of my, uh, my Yu-Gi-Oh! obsession. So I never got a chance to open those at all. I kind of just stopped at, you know, where I was. 
because it was a very expensive hobby. And at that time, there was no way for me to even earn a job or a salary because uh, I was only like what, 12 years old. How old was I? I I'll do the map later. We have Robin, uh, Robbing, Robbing Goblin. This one is only 24 cents, 24 cents. Yeah, at the time I was only 14 years old, according to my math. Uh, maybe 15, I don't know. But um, yeah, so I was still in what, was that high school age, I think? Maybe, maybe freshman year? Senior, uh, no, sorry, sophomore year maybe? So um, yeah, and what was cool about this, like back in the day, is um, we used to have a, a, a 7-Eleven that was like right next to the school. And obviously, as soon as I got off of school, I went straight to the 7-Eleven. And I was like, I got I, I gotta buy some packs. Um, I remember buying like a bunch of the uh, structure decks for like Kaiba and Yugi. Uh, first edition too, by the way. I don't know where they are. Uh, I have a couple of those cards that, that I kept back. But um, yeah, a lot, a lot of those cards were like... Uh, I kind of wish I kept a lot of them in better conditions. Um, that because they would have been worth a decent amount of money, especially the first edition of Blue Eyes, White Dragon, and the uh, uh, Dark Magician first editions. I never got into the uh, uh, the Joey structure deck or the Maximum Pegasus structure decks, and I kind of wish I did, but uh, they're, they're still not that expensive to get for these structure decks for those particular ones. But the the Kaiba and the Yugi, yes, super expensive, especially if they're mid conditions. Uh, this one is number 36 for this one. This one is a dollar and 70 cents. That's actually pretty good for a rare. Pretty good for a rare. But it's also actually quite useful as well. Even I assume in today's meta. To some degree. To some degree. And I'm trying to remember too, like how much the packs were back in the day. But I want to say they're like maybe $2.99, something like that. So they weren't like super expensive as a kid, especially if you have like an allowance. Um, like obviously my allowance was supposed to be meant for food, but I end up like I don't even know what I did. I, I might have like maybe teamed up with a, with a buddy of mine and we like collaborated on like, okay, you get half my sandwich, I get the other half, half sandwich, and we, we split in the cards. I don't know. I don't know how we did it. Or like maybe I, maybe I just didn't eat lunch that day or something like that. Just, be, just because I wanted to grab some packs. I would say it's pretty similar to like the Pokemon days, but I think it was a, a little bit more so uh, around this time frame when Yu-Gi-Oh came out because I was, I was like in, in my teens and I was like, you know, obviously I was watching the anime and I, I, had, I had to play some more of the Yu-Gi-Oh card and, and I collected and stuff like that. The Harpy's Lady, classic, and of course the Witch's Apprentice, rare only though. This one is uh, 26 cents. And also at 14 years old, I don't really have a job also. Um, I talked about this in other videos, but I used to, you know, have like a business, if you will. I was like selling candy in school. I didn't always use it for like Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon cards. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! At, at that time, more, more so than Pokemon. Um, but, I, but also saving up for like a laptop as well um, that, I was, that I really wanted. And I think it was PS2 time, maybe? And I, that, that I wanted to buy because like my dad was like, Oh, you, got, you want a PS2? Or whatever the con, I'm pretty sure it was PS2. Like, you're gonna have to work for it. It's like, damn it. Okay, fine. What, what I have to do? So he took me to like the Costco and, and whatnot, and we bought a bunch of candy wholesale. And I was selling in school. And so, like, any extra money I had inside, I would buy some Yu Gi Oh packs, put it to my binders. I wasn't really big into like, you know, the, the dueling scene. Like, uh, I just really wanted to just collect them because the monsters look cool. You know, obviously it was in the anime, so I was like, I gotta, I gotta have like the, the blue eyes and the, the cool cards. Um, I wasn't really that big into trading, but uh, I know a lot of my friends, they were like, oh, I got this XYZ card. Um, well, maybe not the XZ card, but you, you get the drip. I, I got this one card, it's like, especially the um, Mirror Force is what I remember trading for. I was like, oh, I gotta have Mirror Force. Cause it was so hard to get an ultra rare at the time. So I had to trade a lot of my cards for that Mirror Force. And it was it was pretty shit condition too, and I still wanted it. 107. So this one's only 15 cents. That was that was the name of the game back in the day. Is trying to get those uh those these ultra rares, especially the nostalgic ultra rares like Thousand Dragon, Mirror Force, Summon Skull, Blue Eyes, of course, Dark Magician, the Red Eyes Black Dragon is another one, big one that everyone wanted. But uh, basically the, the prominent ones from the anime. 
even Time Wizard to some degree. But I think I, I, think I actually got that from a, a pack. So I'd have to trade for that one. There's a lot of people that wanted that card too. I was like, but I, I wasn't trading. I, I was definitely hoarding out my cards. <laughs> it's like, I want that card. Because they, they, they wanted it for the duel to like, you know, use it in a duel. But I was like, I'm just keeping it in my binders. So, and that's why a lot of my cards were pretty, pretty still good condition, especially my Genzo. I got a PSA 8 for that one. Um, but uh, my, my blue eyes for some reason, I just didn't keep it as pristine as conditions. Yeah, so I was gonna get a PSA 5 for that one. But if I would've got like a PSA 8 or a 9 maybe, then uh, dude. But the fake trap, it's not gonna give me that money at all. Uh, this is number 56. This one is only 23 cents, so nowhere near 15, 20,000. <laughs> and obviously if you, have a, if, a, if you have a blue eyes PSA 10, that's anywhere from 40 to $60,000. Maybe even, you could probably even negotiate maybe like 75. I don't, I'm not sure what the highest price is, but if I do find it, if the editors could find that for me, then um, they could just annotate it in the bottom. But uh, I'm pretty sure those are definitely poly sought, sought after. Nowhere near the Charizards though. The Charizards are definitely much more up there in price. I think they're still like half a million? So 500,000? Maybe? Maybe maybe 300,000? Um, I know they used to be like closer to like a million, but I think they definitely depreciated. Um, and the, the, the hype kind of went down a little bit um, since 2020. But over time, I think it will go back up. It's, it's, it's like one of those like those cycles you just kind of like wait for. And when it's a good time to buy or sell, Right now, it's kind of a good time to buy because the prices are pretty low, but um, relatively speaking. And um, so, and then um, eventually it'll jump back up. So the Great Moth, we saw this one early, but we didn't price it out. Uh, this one is number 70, only 27 cents. The Weevil Underwood. I could have sworn the Great Moth was an ultra rare, but I guess not. Because uh, it was a pretty powerful card back in the day for, uh, for a bug card. Yeah, recently um, uh, one, of, one of my coordinators for the, for the channel, Miss um, Safra, she sent me a video of the voice actress for uh, My Valentine. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Uh, like My Valentine was definitely a crush for a lot of uh, teens back in the day. Um, I, I always had a, you know, a little crush on, on Teo as well. You know, she was cute, she was adorable. She's one like the, the girl next door vibe. Like, a, you know, the nice girl. So, you know, obviously I had a question on that as well. Cause like, you know, you always want that as a, as a growing boy. <laughs> we got Star Boy and we have our, we have a super rare Kazajin. Kazajin, of course. Um, they have the uh, Kazajin, what was the other one that I can't remember the name of? Yeah, the Paradox Brothers, yes. The Rhyming Brothers. They were, of course, very big onto like the Gate Guardians and the, uh, what is it called? Uh, and the, the Elements. So obviously we have the Water, uh, Sujin, Kazajin, and, and Senga the, of Thunder. So I, I think I already had Senga. I'm not sure about Kazajin and Sujin, but regardless though, the Kazajin for a super rare, decent price, it's one of, it's one of the higher up there's at $4.13. That's actually really good for a super rare. Really good. And being the 20th anniversary too, so it's like, is keeping his value is pretty up there. So I'm actually, I, actually surprised. But I think the reason why it's so high is because of the nostalgia of it all. Because everyone knows about the Paradox Brothers and the, the three cars and the Gate Guardians and stuff like that. So obviously it will retain its value. Because anything associated to anime, as you guys know, is going to definitely uh, um, be worth high in value. All right, we have the Pumpkin of the King of Ghosts. That was one of uh, uh, Bannon Keefe's, like, um, not, not his, not, not one of his, like, drones or whatever is a... I forget the guy's name, but I'll throw a picture of his face. Um, one of his cards. The Flame Cerebus. The German Faction. Now, like, look, look at these cards. It makes me want to, like, rewatch the anime again. <laughs> Especially the uh, Duelist Kingdom. I think that that was like super nostalgic for me. The Petite Moth. 
This is like Ruxin's favorite card, so got, got, got to support the, the Ruxin 34. Uh, Hobi Shubi again. All right, we have the little little Chimera, and funny enough, we get the another one of the uh, Paradox cards, Senga of Thunder, number twenty-five. So it is actually the most expensive of the three, four dollars and twenty-seven cents. Very nice. So all we're missing is Sujin to complete the collection of those three. So we got like about I don't know eight or so packs left. All right, we have the Guardian of the Labyrinth. The uh, Black uh, Black Land Fire Dragon. The Hunter Spider. Now, obviously these cards are all like normal monsters. Um, these aren't useful at all in the current meta because right now it's all about the effect cards or the hand traps or the link summons or the XC summons. So using like a normal card Unless it's like a maybe a blue eyes because there's a lot of blue eyes support, then it's probably not useful to use it. Even the blue eyes support cards are not even that um, useful sometimes. It just depends on like there's, there's better like meta decks they can use. The mass of destruction, ooh, a very classic one coming up. The catapult turtle, one of Yugi's cards. Very cool, very nostalgic. This one's only 76 cents though. Not high value at all, but it adds to my collection. I'm still missing a lot of cards for my my LOB collection, so I kind of want to get more of those packs uh, so I can uh, you do like a one pack pull or something with them. The Mystic Horseman, Dragon, Piper. I think that was a uh, Pe Pegasus card. Jellyfish, Leg Hole. Nostalgic card here, classic of Dark Illusions. It's by the same guy that I mentioned earlier. With the pumpkin, I think. Yado Karu. The blue winged crow. The Robin Goblin. And ooh! <laughs> Secret rare baby! Thousand Dragon! Yes! I th I think we pulled this one already. I think um I think I, Liam pulled this one, I recall, back when we were in uh, the Red Rock. I think, yeah, it was Red Rock? No, no, it was uh, the Grand Canyon. Did we check out that video right over there? You guys want to check out that video. But the Thousand Dragon is now in my collection. 143. I still, I, I still need to pull the Gate Guardian though. I don't think I pulled that one yet for Secret Rare. But this one, it's kind of low for a Secret Rare. Maybe because it's, like, it's pretty easy to get, to be honest with you at two dollars and 31 cents decent decent it will again add to my collection but i really want the gate guardian that'll be that'll be that'll be nice to get i'm pretty sure there's there's no way for you to, for you to get two secret rares in uh, the same booster box but you never know you never know but i definitely want the summon skull I, I still have yet to pull that card destroyer golem the leo gun the Ancient Elf. This one is new. I, I don't I remember seeing this one ever. The Morphin Finn? Something like that? I never saw this card in my life. Uh, the Mushroom Man number two. But keep in mind, guys, like when, when I was a kid, I, I, I didn't get every single card from, uh, from that original 2002 run. The Slim Pack and the Mass Sorcerer is the last card here. Probably not worth a lot of money, but it was still a useful card back in the day. Back Mod Dite, 23 cents. 23 cents. All right. If you guys are enjoying this, definitely, definitely press a like for luck. Because we have yet to pull the Summon Skull. Um, as well, the Gate Guardian, that'd be, that'd be good to open as well, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to pull that one in this episode. But the Gate, the Summon Skull might be a possibility. It might be. The Roaring Ocean Snake. The Lady of Faith, who turns into a rock star if you fuse her with someone else. I think it was Magician of Faith, maybe. I can't remember. The Larva Moth. The Hunter Spider. 
The Tremendous Fire. A classic Pegasus card. Oh no, uh, it's actually a Kyber card. Yeah, it's a Kyber card. Uh, Sangi the Dark Clown. Sangi, Empress Judge. The Little Swordsman of Isle. And the Melis Radiant. Final card here. Probably not worth a whole lot. This is uh, 26 cents. 26 for this. This uh, vicious Yorkie. <laughs> I've seen someone like uh, I think it was Etsy. They were like um, you could basically uh, put you, your pet as a Yu-Gi-Oh Pokemon card, and it's so adorable. I, I'm thinking about doing that. You know, getting one from like uh, for uh, you know Bash or Bella. Uh, that'd be kind of cool to have a, a Yu-Gi-Oh card based on my pets. Maybe I'll think about it. Another, uh, I think it's a Pegasus card. The Bushin box, but I think he made a made a normal monster. I don't think he fused anything to get that monster in the anime. Now, the one thing I will say about the anime is like, there's a lot of stuff they did in the anime that was like totally not how the card is supposed to be in uh, you know physical form. The, the the most famous one for me is like when uh, when Yugi attacked the moon. It was like you can't attack the moon. Now, Stone Soldier, destroy. stone soldier monster whatever it's like what are you talking about attack the moon <laughs> what are you high yugi are you high you just making up your own rules right now got the slim pack Ooh, a classic uh it was called uh joey car i think seal shield and sword very useful too back in the day very useful uh so this one is uh 23 cents 23 cents all right, down to our last two packs. If we don't get Summon Skull in this one, we're gonna have to buy more of these packs, which, you know, fortunate for me, there's plenty at my card shop. Not, not GameStop. GameStop does have Yu-Gi-Oh cards from time to time, but they don't, they don't have all cards. If anything, they don't have like the, the latest cards. If that, if that. I usually go to like my Walmart or my Target, um, if, if I want to be close by, but because um, my card shop is pretty far away from me. So if I'm ever in the neighborhood, I'll stop by and grab some packs from there. But uh, they, they've always supported me. Oh yeah, we have the, uh, what's this? The, the Armored Zombie is next. Habikami. The, the Crash Clown. The Launcher Spider. This used to be, used to be a lot uh, in my um, my deck back in the day because of the, the high attack and defense. All right, we have the Dark Elf. So yeah, this is actually a very, very cool card. The opposite of the Mystical Elf because of his attack power. But it does require a cost of 1,000 your own life points to attack though. Mostly in my strategy is to kind of, you know, keep it there as like a, a buffer so I can summon other cards while they, they're not able to attack me. So, because I'm not going to sacrifice a thousand of my life points. Only if I have to. But yeah, 52 cents for this one. A useful card to kind of like stall the, st stall the game a little bit. All right, guys, final pack magic. Can we do it? Guys, you're a drill. So, like, for luck. Summon Skull, please. Summon Skull, please. But then again, if I don't pull Summon Skull, it's not that big a deal because I enjoy opening up like these cards. I really do. Like this one, blue eyes, uh, Legion blue eyes. We got the baby dragon, baby. The bistro. Butcher. The leg hole again. The card I don't remember ever seeing as a kid. <laughs> the Occu beam. I, like I remember a lot of these cards, you know, like, but as a kid, whatever, but for some reason, that card just does not draw a bell. I don't know. But I, I, like I said, I, I bought a lot of packs back in the day when I, when I was a kid. A lot of cards. The Harpy Lady. And we do end up with a dud of a card. It's only a fake trap. So no last pack magic or final pack magic. But nevertheless, guys, nevertheless, it was a great pull. We did pull the the Thousand Dragon for the second time, technically in this channel. Um, but obviously I love 
opening up these old nostalgic packs. Hope you guys do as well. If you guys want to see more Metal Raiders or Legend of Blue Eyes, obviously we still have Feral Serpents, Stup Spell Rivers, and Invasion of Chaos. So definitely want to knock those out before I, I revisit again, I guess revisit again, of the older 25th anniversary ones because I still got a lot of cards that I want to complete my collection. So in next week's video, just kind of reminisce on like some of these old school packs that I talked about with Metal Raiders. Obviously next week is going to be the Yu-Gi-Oh! duel that I talked about that I did with Liam. Now we actually did that duel a long time ago. I think we did that, I want to say it was like July or August? Something like that of 2023. And uh, we just now got a time to actually upload that video. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you, show showcase that next week. So if you guys wanna check out the Yu-Gi-Oh deal that me and Liam did last year, definitely subscribe for that video because it's gonna be kind of surprising, kind of surprising how it all end up. Some of the cards that I have for a while here is of course these right here, the Power Cubes, which is gonna be a versus, a Pokemon versus Yu-Gi-Oh Power Cube. So um, that's gonna be sometime in the coming uploads so definitely subscribe for that if you guys want to see who would win in the power club power cube match i guess and also guys if you haven't already done so definitely check out my sponsor link down below if you guys want to protect your own booster box obviously it has to be a pretty viable boost box maybe like a first edition of the legend of blue eyes is probably better or middle raiders but this is actually pretty expensive too this is easily over 500 dollars just for this booster box and i definitely want to protect it for future generations. And it looks just pretty damn cool just in this protective case. But check out that sponsor and also help support the show as well. But hey guys, my name is Talos. This is of course the 20th anniversary of the Metal Raiders. And of course, gotta get that Seven Skull eventually. So I'll definitely try to get more, but there's no drill. Love you guys. Peace.